Mr. Jacob Applebaum, uh, welcome to uh, Mediabox. Uh, and you are independent security research and journalist uh, and a developer, also advocate with the TOR project. So I would like to start with the TOR project. What's that actually? Uh, the TOR project is a nonprofit dedicated to human rights. One of the fundamental human rights that we feel is the ability to have privacy, and specifically in the form of anonymity. So we produce free software for freedom, which means that all of the programs we write, we give away the things that allow you to make those programs. And we also help people to run a network. And this anonymity network is run by really thousands of people around the world so that you can browse the web anonymously, chat anonymously, bypass censorship, bypass surveillance. And uh, yeah, so it's a free software project and a community, and it's a nonprofit. In fact, we've been funded by the the American government, the German government, uh, we've funded by lots of individual donors, and um, yeah, we produce free software for freedom. And your presence in Council of Europe is important because on the occasion of the World Forum for Democracy 2015, today you participated in the discussions on state surveillance, and uh, the topic was what is the right uh, dose limits. But I would like to ask you how to maintain a balance between security and freedom in a democratic society, especially under threat. Mm. Well, I mean, there are a lot of different ways we can talk about this, but I guess I feel that that framing is just the wrong framing. All of France was already under mass surveillance last week. Mm -hmm. All the phone calls have metadata being recorded about them according to the laws, the internet is being monitored, there's censorship, there's all sorts of things that are taking place. And what did that security buy us? It bought us a loss of privacy and loss of liberty. It makes us less safe, it makes us less secure, and it did not stop those terrorist attacks, actually. Mm -hmm. So the idea, the framing of security versus privacy or security versus liberty, um, it's simply, it's just not supported that surveillance, in the case of state surveillance, as we discussed on this panel, that it guarantees safety at all, or security, in fact. So when I look at this, what I think is, there are cases where privacy matters. For example, you have no right and no one has any right to tell me in the matter of security that I should be uh, forced to take off my clothes here in public right now, right? And that's because not privacy is protecting me, but dignity and agency and choice. And that is actually the issue. So the question is, do we wish to have issues of mass surveillance, targeted surveillance, and sabotage infrastructure by various states and corporate players? Mm -hmm and lose our liberty in exchange for ne next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think the answer to that is clear, which is no, we don't want that. We want secure systems because there are lots of people that would wish to do us harm in a myriad different ways. And we have to strengthen the systems that we have. And that on the panel was roundly decided is more democracy mm -hmm. rather than more fear or more violence. And you're coming from USA, so could you please compare also USA policies and European policies for fighting, let's say, on extremism, but maybe we can say the policies of surveillance? Well, I um, have not lived in the United States for some time now, for three years. I live in Germany now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, what I see taking place in Europe is actually horrifying. Mm -hmm. um, just a few days ago, some right-wing politicians in France called for the preemptive arrest and internment of Muslims. Mm -hmm. We don't need to look to America to shame anyone. We need to just think about what people are saying in France right now. We do not round people up and put them in camps. This is not what happens in a liberal democracy. And it will not stop terrorism because the people that they wish to round up and put into camps in some cases are the very refugees who are fleeing terrorism. So when I look to that, I think we need to just simply really recommit to democratic open society, to commitments about protecting refugees, and to integrating people in society that are otherwise outside of society, to help secure their communications rather than to treat them as if they are terrorists that have not yet become fully realized terrorists. In other words, to give people things to live for instead of creating conditions in which they're willing to commit suicide and to kill other people. We must adjust root causes, in addition to these other things that people have talked about that are not about internment. And we must immediately call out the racism and the xenophobia and the extreme violence. But the extreme violence happens on many sides. Mm -hmm. You know, the history of Europe 
is, is one where people have today pretended that it doesn't exist. They've said something along the lines of, you know, we face a new threat, a new kind of threat. No, actually we don't. We've, we've been here before. And part of the lessons learned that caused the Council of Europe to be created and the Court of Human Rights mm -hmm. to be created is proof that we've been here before. And the reality is that state surveillance in Europe has been used to commit genocides. So the more surveillance that we have, no matter what the intentions of the system today, no matter how good every single spy is that is in power today, it does not change the fact that mass surveillance systems are the things that have caused the most deaths and the most harm in European history in the last hundred years. Thank you for your all contributions, Mr. Appleboom. Thank you very Thank much. You.